Hi there, and welcome to this new video. Uh, I just want to apologise, it's been a couple of weeks since I last posted a video on the channel. Uh, there's been a few things going on tonight, so I've just not had the time to actually post the videos. Uh, but here we are, and this video is going to be about green iguanas, or American iguanas, as they're sometimes referred to. Uh, so we'll just start off a bit of... This is going to be a bit of basic information about them. Uh, so they're, they're, they're a large arboreal, uh, herbivorous, uh, they're mostly herbivorous, I would say, yeah. They, they eat a lot of uh, veg and leaves and that like that. But uh, uh, usually this species is just called iguana. Uh, they range over a large geographic area uh it is native from southern brazil and they are also found as far as uh paraguay uh puerto rico and north as uh, far as mexico as well uh in terms of size uh people i think people realize they are a very large species uh they grow to about 1.5 meters uh which is about 4.9 uh, foot or uh, in length from head to tail and some specimens have grown to more than two meters which is 6.6 .6 foot uh, with body weights upward of 20 pounds which is about 9.1 kilograms so it gives you an idea I'm, I mean I'm six foot two so <laughs> you can imagine how huge uh, they can potentially grow to uh, though mostly, most of them grow around about the 1.5, 1.6 sort of uh, meter area. Uh, as mentioned, they feed on leaves uh, such as uh, turnip, mustard, and dandelion greens. Uh, these are more in the wild, uh, what they feed on. Uh, flowers, fruit, uh, and growing shoots of uh, upwards of of a of hundred different species of plant. Uh, in captivity, uh, they do eat the sort of like the mixed veg, like butternut squash. You know, uh, that's sort of, that's the, that's their staple diet. Actually, is the the veg, uh, veg and fruit. Uh, they can they do eat some insects like locusts and snails. Uh, but it's you would not feed them uh, that on a regular basis uh, or any meat uh, because it can give them renal failure. Uh, so it's more the vegetables and leaves uh, and salad sort of type uh, foods that you can get actually. So uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, the, 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 people think, you know, being a, a, such a large lizard, you know, they must eat, you know, meat. They must eat, you know, consume, you know, a vast amount of uh, protein, you know. Uh, well, that's, that's not the case. It's, it's more, as I say, it's more the, the actual leaves and uh, vegetables that they consume. Uh, and they do consume that in large quantities. Uh they're a very uh, they're a wonderful species to to keep actually like you know as a pet uh, if you happen to get one from a hatchling and then see that journey where they they grow and you tame them by handling uh, and interaction they do they can show affection. This is something a lot of people don't actually realize. They can actually show affection. Uh, they are, they are a high maintenance uh, lizard uh, in terms of the keep. Uh, temperatures, uh, they do require high temperatures. I mean, we're talking like a, a high uh, hotspot of about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. They do require that. Uh, also, they require must have UVB and UVA lighting 
or else their bodies cannot generate or produce the vitamin D that promotes calcium absorption. Uh, if, they do not, if they can't do that, it can result in metabolic bone disease that can be extremely fatal. So that's why sometimes some iguanas do not last long. Uh, it's because they're not getting the correct uh, amount of vitamin to sustain their huge body. They cannot regulate uh, their temperature uh, as with most lizards, they, can't, they cannot do that. So they need to have this lighting there for them to help promote that. Uh, they are one of the most commonly kept species uh, of lizards as a pet. Uh, the detrimental downside uh, is that they are bought as hatchlings. You know, families will go in uh, to a pet shop and they see this wonderful looking green lizard there as a hatchling. What they don't realize a lot of the time is that that lizard, which is probably only around about that size in length, will grow to be... I've just got out the frame of the camera here. You know, it will grow to that length. So in that event, what do you require? Like when you have a, have a pet that's like that, which requires the temperatures uh, and and the lighting, you know, you, you, you have to have the appropriate enclosure. And a lot of times uh, people don't have the room for that enclosure. Uh, I myself, uh, I just do not have the room, you know, for an enclosure of the size required for a green iguana. As much as I would love, absolutely love to have a green iguana, Fantastic lizards to have, to have. I've held an iguana uh, many times before, interacted with them, and uh, but I don't have the space to give that pet, give that species, you know, the proper care that it requires. Uh, so what what happens is that they ended up, they end, usually end up being discarded. Uh, Organisations like the uh, RSPCA, SSPCA in Scotland uh, usually pick them up, you know, uh, or you, s you hear horror stories of them being abandoned, just randomly abandoned. Uh, or you, you see on various pages, free to a good home, because they know they're not going to be able to care for it. Uh, so this is why it's important that you really do your homework, actually, when you look to have a green iguana. Uh, so the size of the enclosure required, uh, to give you an idea, uh, should measure, uh, first of all, six feet high at least. So basically the height of myself near enough, six feet high uh, by six feet wide, and say so 12 foot long, so 12 foot in depth, because they need that room to move around. Yeah. Uh, and they do spend a lot of their times uh, on branches. Uh, being an arboreal species, uh, they're not always on the ground, they're actually up high. And uh, so you, they need that kind of environment. You know, sometimes uh, the, the, there is. Uh, enclosures that people have where they're actually outside uh they have like mesh a mesh enclosure uh that can actually work as long as you can actually produce the lighting as well that they require usually for like the sort of the uv lighting uh two strips of uv lighting uh is required and then uh for an adult green iguana have around about six banks of, uh, say, basking or heat bulbs, you know, because usually when uh, a green iguana is a hatchling, juvenile, you can get away with one, but you need around about a bank of six. And uh, yeah, so you can imagine your electricity bill 
with you know so when you feel like an iguana just remember your electricity bill is going to go uh, so I hope you got a good deal with, with, with whatever, whatever company. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, so it's important that uh, you do your homework uh, for them. Uh, in terms of like uh, their cousins, I mean, I, I've showed you one of their sort of distant cousins, uh, which is the Chinese water dragon. They have similar sort of, uh, similar body frame, coloration, uh, but uh, green iguana, they have, uh, when an adult, have lots of spines, spikes going right along the back there. They have a huge jowl that hangs down as well. And, uh, and they will very quickly tell you if they're not wanting to uh, be held or uh, be interacted with because uh, they can actually, they have, they have such power. They have a lot of power. Uh, in their tail, which will whip you. Uh, that will cause a, a, a significant bruise. Uh, but as I say, they can be affectionate. Once they, because they actually can recognize their keeper. They actually, after a period of time, they uh, respond and they actually recognize their keeper. Uh, much like I say, a, a cat does or a dog does. Uh, they can actually recognize their keeper and they, they show affection to that keeper by sort of bonding by maybe just rubbing their head and that towards them. Uh, so yeah, so they're, it's, it's, they're a fantastic species to have uh, as a pet. In the wild, uh, same thing, they are actually, in, uh, in terms of how they spend their time, uh, they spend it uh, in branches. They, the green one actually is usually found more near banks of streams and rivers. Uh, that's where you'll find them because they, they need to have the be hydrated. Uh, so they'll spend the time there uh, high up in a branch. They're very rarely at the bottom, very rarely at the bottom. They like to be high up, uh, hence the arboreal name. And uh, yeah, so and and they consume a lot of leaves. Yeah, you know? so sometimes in I believe like places like Mexico and Paraguay, they are considered to be a bit of a, an infestation because they too consume crops. So yeah, uh, some farmers are not too fond, you know, of them being about because they will consume a high amount uh, to support their body weight. Uh, but yeah, but that's that's pretty much the video uh, for this for this week about green iguanas. Just a basic information about them. I would strongly uh, urge you if you ever consider to get a green iguana, go on the various websites, read what is required in terms of enclosure. Well, well I'll just give you an idea of the size, you know. Uh, but read about the dietary requirements, what you can get from your local supermarket, what you can get from a local pet shop. Cause like there is, diff there is actually specialized uh, formulas done up for green iguanas in, in your pet shops, you can get them, or you can actually get stuff from your local supermarket to actually uh, provide for them, right? And so, uh, but definitely do your research, speak to a, uh, a specialist a reptile shop keeper uh, and just ask as many questions. Just keep asking uh, questions because, uh, as I say, these, these species are they're wonderful. And uh, to avoid discarding them, that's something we don't. We want to avoid all that area. We we, we see it with with other, other uh, areas of animals like dogs and cats. Like, you know, let's try and minimise that. Like, you know, if you're going to get a pet, like, you know, the old saying is like, you know, don't, you know, if you're going to get a dog, you know, it's not just for Christmas, it's for life. Same thing for a, a, a lizard. It's not just for Christmas, birthdays, Easter, you know, it's for life. Uh, and these species can live up uh, to a good 20 years, 25 plus uh, years uh, in the right conditions. Uh, so that's what you're taking on. Uh, this is something uh, I'm just going to quickly briefly touch upon uh, before we end the video. Is that uh, a lot? Not a lot of people don't realise how long a lizard or a snake can actually live. 
Uh, some cases they live longer than a dog or a cat. It's it's true. Uh, I in my previous videos and video that uh, I'm very proud of uh, about Chinese water dragons, where I showed uh, Buddy my Chinese water dragon. He's 17. Now we had a family dog that didn't look, uh, live as long as that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my family members have had pets that not lived as long as that. So that gives you an idea. You keep them in the right conditions, they will live. You know, for a good amount of years, you are you are providing a long-term commitment, and I mean long-term. If you want to put it into joking terms, like you know, you'll probably have kids, and they'll probably move out. You know, and that pet will still be with you. <laughs> you know, your kids would have moved out by then. You know, and gone to college or just whatever, start their own family. Uh, well, buddy, seventeen. There you go. Uh, so it's very important that you recognise, right. I'm going to get a lizard and it's going to possibly be with me for 15 years at least, possibly, you know, in the right conditions. So that's why I say ask as many questions as you can. There is never a stupid question. That's what I always say. If you are unsure about anything, ask, always ask, you know, uh, because I've said many times in my, my previous videos, uh, Everything is experience and everything is trial and error. Uh, you will make a mistake. I have made mistakes. It will happen. It's about how you address those mistakes and make sure that you don't do it again. So it's, it's about asking as many questions as you can to avoid any situation that could place the lizard in any potential risk. That's why I say so. Yeah, so that, that is the video. Uh, the next one's potentially going to be about crested geckos. Uh, and we're going to give some basic information about them. I'm promised to actually get that one uploaded a lot quicker than, than, than I have done. It, it certainly won't be two weeks. You, you have to wait for the next video. Uh, but please subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you've liked it. Drop us a comment as well. Also hit that bell as well for updates when the videos will be going on. Uh, so you're notified about that. Uh, and please, I strongly urge you to interact. I would love for you to ask questions, interact as well. That's the point of the channel. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Be safe, take care, and see you next time.